So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do these little Christmas balls. So because I'm doing this as part of Vlogmas I'm actually splitting it into three tutorials, possibly four. Um, so in this first part I'm going to show you how to do the cast on and how to start this ball, um, do the increases for the ball. And then I'm going to do a separate video on the middle bit which will either have a beaded pattern or a colour work pattern. This is one I haven't quite finished yet. I haven't stuffed it yet. So that one's got a tree. Light's not great in here, but um, you see it's got a tree on it, Christmas tree on it. I've got two other. I've got one more beaded pattern and one more feral pattern. One's got feral and beads as well. Um, and I might design some more before I release this pattern. I don't know. But um, I'll put the link to the pattern below. Um, I'm going to knit with this red yarn. This is a kind of like a pinky red and you will need some knitting needles. I'm using 3.75 millimeter and I'm using circular ones. I think these are probably 60 centimeter long circular, so you can use 60 or 80. Um, you can use double pointed needles if you prefer. I'm gonna show you how to do it using circular needles and the magic loop technique. So if you prefer double pointed needles, that's fine, but I'm not gonna show you how to do it with double pointed needles. Uh, if you use double pointed needles, I would recommend that you have um four for the stitches plus one to knit with um just makes it easier and then you also need some a stitch marker so you can use a ring marker or you might find one of these more useful than these padlock markers that you can open and attach into the fabric i'm actually going to show you how i use both um row counter might be useful um, this one, I'm actually going to do beads, so you'll need some beads. I'm using size 6 beads from Debbie Abrahams. Um, and you also, if you're going to do beads, you need a crochet hook. So 0.75mm crochet hook for the size 6 beads. And you might also want some scissors and obviously some stuffing. So, now you can start with a closed cast on. Um, it's a little bit trickier, so I'm going to just show you how to do a regular Start with the regular cast on. So if you just cast on eight stitches, it doesn't matter what kind of cast on you use. I'm doing the long tail cast on. I'm just gonna hold that because it's annoying me. Two, four, six, seven, eight. So um I've just done the long tail cast on. And then once you've cast on, now I do have a separate video for how to knit uh on the get started with the magic loop. So I will try and remember to link that below. If not, go to the tutorials page on my website and you'll find it there. But I'm quickly going to go through how to do magic loop on this video. So if you, when you cast on, doesn't matter what cast on method you use, slide the stitches to the center of the of the cable. So onto the cable part of your needle. And then I want you to count from the end that doesn't have the working yarn. So I've got the working yarn on the tail on the same end. You may have the tail here and the working yarn on this end. Doesn't matter if you tell them working yarn is on the same end or opposite ends. But the end that has the working yarn, count two stitches from that end. So from the end that has the working yarn, count two stitches and then pull up a little bit of a loop. And then slide the six stitches onto one needle tip and the two stitches onto another needle tip. So I've got two stitches with the working yarn on this needle six stitches you may have the tail that might be the end where your tail is on the other needle and then put the needle with the six stitches in your left hand and then just check it's not so difficult with just eight stitches just check your stitches aren't twisted and then um needle with the working with the working yarn pull that needle forward and around so you can nip with it and then I'm going to put my stitch marker on this needle if I can find it. So I did have a stitch marker here and now it's gone. So, oh, there it is. So I'm going to put my stitch marker on this needle on the one I pulled out. So I've got six stitches here, two on the cable here, and this needle is empty, but I put the stitch marker on. And then I'm going to knit these two first two stitches, but the yarn is coming from here. So the yarn is coming from the cable. So that joins this into a circle. So I'm going to knit just the first two stitches. Now I knit continental, but you can obviously do this English style as well. So I'm going to just knit the first two stitches. Now it's really easy for this bit here to pull apart 
when you're going to work in the round so what I normally do is I knit the first two stitches and then I pull that needle with the two stitches and I pull it and pull it and pull it till those two stitches pop around the other side so you'll now see on the cable I've got two stitches I had there originally marker and then two stitches and then I got four stitches left on my left needle so I'm going to knit those four stitches so the first round we're just going to do a plain round to start with this is our first plain round so knit to the end and then when I get to the hang on let me show you this so when I get to the end um those are the stitches I've just knitted when I get to the end what I do is I flick the needle over so that's in my left hand and the needles are pointing to the right then I take the stitches that are on the cable and slide them onto the needle tip now you may struggle a little bit depending on how tight you cast on this um to get the stitches onto your needle tip if you struggle just use your fingernails and usually usually it's okay um so the stitches i'm going to knit now are the stitches where the um, marker is the other needle where the working yarn is that's the needle i'm going to knit with so i'm going to pull that needle forward and around so i can knit with it so i've got a loop here and a loop here um, if you are new to Magic Loop and you need something a little bit more in-depth than that explanation, go and watch my video on how to get started with Magic Loop. So I'm going to knit these two stitches and now I'm at the beginning of the round where the marker is. So I slip my marker across and then I'm going to click my row counter. And then the next round, round two, is knit one, make one to the end. So I'm going to end up with 16 stitches. I'm going to knit one. Now make one, the increase I like to use is the make one increase and you pick up the strand that goes between two stitches and you put it on the left hand needle. Now make sure it goes from front across to the back so it's sitting the same way that you're knitting your knit stitches and then you knit it through the back loop. If you knit it through the front loop you end up with a hole. Knit the next one. Now we're going to pick up a stitch here as well which is this stitch right kind of on the edge here um, so the loop right on the edge here that goes between that stitch that we just knitted and the next one on the other needle so I'm going to knit that through the back loop so there's two stitches and that turned into four stitches so when I finish flip my needle around push the stitches that are on the cable onto the needle tip the needle with the working yarn pull that needle forward and around so I can knit with it and then I'm going to knit one Pick up the strand that goes between two stitches, put it on the left hand needle and then knit it through the back loop. Knit one. So the easiest way I find to do it is if I take my right needle and I pick up that loop. Can you see that? From the back, so my needle is pointing towards me. Then I just put my left needle into the front of that loop and then my right needle is ready to just knit it. You can also just pick it up like that put it on the left hand needle and then knit it through the back loop knit one and then pick up remember do a make one at the end of the needle so it's the strand that goes between that stitch and the one on the other needle and knit that through the back loop so don't forget the one on the end of the needle whether you're doing double pointed needles or magic loop uh, don't forget the one on the end of the needle then the knit one Pick up the strand to make one, knit one, make one, and then get to the end of the round. So click my row counter, and then the next round is just a plain knit round. So I'm not going to do the whole increase section, I don't think. Maybe I will. It's only eight rounds. We'll see how long it takes. Um, but I will do enough rounds so we kind of get set up. So the round three is just a plain knit round. I always knit a lot tighter when I'm doing tutorials. <laughs> My stitches feel really tight at the moment. I don't know why, but I knit tighter when I'm doing a tutorial. And I'm banging my bracelet against the leg of my um, tripod. So apologies if you heard that kind of clicking noise. Um, so just chatting while I knit to the end of this round. Okay, so that's the end of the round. Slip my marker across and then round 
I was around three, around four is knit one, make one, knit two, make one, knit one. Six, yeah, that's right. Sorry, just checking. So knit one, make one, knit two, make one, knit one. So I'm going to knit one, make one, knit two, make one, knit one. So that's a quarter of my round. So I'm going to end up with... Uh, six stitches in each quarter or 24 stitches in total so knit one make one knit two so let me show you how to do the make one again it's a little bit easier here so the way i normally do it is i pick up with the needle from the back pointing towards the towards me lift it on the left hand needle so i just put the left hand needle into the front and then the right hand needle is ready to just knit it and that saves me a bit of time so i did knit one and then i'm going to do knit one make one knit two make one knit one so i should have 12 stitches here now and then so i'll end up with 24 stitches in total so last quarter knit one make one so the uh, knit two make one knit one so it's divided into quarters so that's why if you're using double pointed needles it is easier if you put the stitches onto four needles and knit with the fifth one i know if you're british you and you're used to knitting socks for example on double pointed needles you're probably used to dividing your stitches onto three needles and knitting with the fourth one but because this is kind of divided into quarters it is easier if you divide your stitches onto four double pointed needles and knit with the fifth one which is what most people do in Scandinavia and Germany, I believe. And then in Norway, that's the common way to knit socks. Okay, so I'm just going to knit to the end of the round. And if you want more in-depth about Magic Loop, check out my Magic Loop video. Okay. Okay, end of the round. Just going to move this tripod over a little bit to try and avoid click tapping my bracelet around against it all the time. So row six, um, knit one, make one, knit one, two, three, four, make one, knit one. So I'm going to repeat that three more times or to the end of the round. So knit one, make one, knit four, two, three, four, make one, knit one. So you may have noticed that on this round you are knit one, make one, and then you're knitting one, two more stitches than you did on the previous increase round. So for each increase round, you increase by two stitches between the make one. Okay, and then just the final quarter of this round left. Knit one, make one, one, two, three, four, make one, knit one, slip the marker. That's round six, so round seven is a plain round. I'm going to knit to the end of this round, getting more stitches now. I should have 32 stitches now. Normally, I tend to count actually on my plain rounds, but I'm not doing that today since I'm recording it. I'll just trust that I haven't made a mistake. Okay, so I'm just going to knit to the marker. Okay, slip the marker. Final increase round, round eight. So knit one, make one. Knit six, two, three, four, five, six. Make one. Knit one. Pull out some more yarn. Change my needles around. So you can get quick with the change in the magic loop needles if with a bit of practice. I know that's what a lot of people complain about is that they find it a bit slow, but it does get quicker with practice. Knit one, make one, knit six, one, two, three, 
five, six, knit one, knit one, knit one, make one, one, two, three, four, five, six, make one, knit one. And then I got a quarter left to do. So knit one, make one, knit six, one, two, three, four, five, six, make one, knit one. Okay, so that's eight stitches. Now what I tend to do, because I do find it easier if I start around where the beginning of the needle is. So what I tend to do when I get to this point is I ha I'll have 40 stitches. So four lots of 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. What I tend to do is take my marker off, slide those stitches around to the other side. Actually, I'll do, I'll do one more round to show you this. I'll do an extra, sneak in an extra round. So, um, I've knitted those 10. I'm going to slide those around the other side. So just pull that needle. And then I'm going to knit these 10 stitches. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I've got 10 stitches there and I've got 30 on the other side, which is a bit too tight. And then I'm going to, you don't have to do this. You can leave the marker at the beginning of the round where it was. But I find it easier if I start a new needle at the beginning of the round. Especially if I'm not going to knit the whole thing in one go. So I'm going to knit the first 10 stitches here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And then I'm going to slide, so just pull that needle, slide those stitches around the other side. So now I've got 10 and 10, and this is where the beginning of the round is. Now, to make it easy to remember where the beginning of the round is, I'm going to put a marker in. So I chose a pink marker, which maybe it wasn't a good idea because I got pink yarn. So there's no point having a marker when you're being in the round. It's at the beginning of a needle. There's no point having a marker because it just slides around on this cable. And every time you um, change needle, it falls off. So it's just annoying. So just put one of these padlock markers or another removable marker into the fabric so it's kind of stuck there and then you know that when you get to the needle where that marker is on that side you're at the beginning of the round so i'm going to just pull this into the middle so you can see so this is what it looks like now now at the end actually when we're halfway through we're going to sew up that hole you can do it now actually let me show you how to do this now you don't want to leave sewing that up till the end of the uh, ball because it it's just the pain um it gets very fiddly so what i normally say is when you've done the color work or beader section so when you get to here turn the bauble inside out and weave in the end so you want it but i'll show you how to do that now you can do it at this point or you can wait if you're doing two colors i tend to wait till i finish the color work and then i'll do it so you want to close up that hole so i've um left a tail I want the tail to be about four inches ten centimeters this might be slightly shorter sewing needle and then you just want to go in and out of these stitches around the cast on i haven't got all the way around yet so um okay i think that's about it so around those eight stitches doesn't matter if you catch every single stitch but you just want to take the yarn through kind of the edge so that you can pull it tight like that and that will close that up and then so pull that tight and then i'm going to take it i'm actually going to just go through there again because there's a little bit of a hole there so i'm just going to go through here pull it tight and then i'm going to take still a little bit of a, can you see there's a little bit of a gap there so i'm just going to go um, like that just to make sure I close up that gap there you go then I'm going to take the needle through to the inside of my circle just check that I'm happy with that and then turn it over and then I'm just going to weave in the end on the back and normally I go kind of like I choose a row and I kind of go along that row because this is knitted in the round on a very small circle 
a little bit more difficult. So I'm just gonna weave in the stitches, weave in the end, there we go. And then, because I'm weaving it in, I might as well trim it. So you can do that at this point, or you can wait till you've knitted the um, main pattern. But before you start doing the decreases at the top, turn your bobble inside out and weave in any loose ends, close up that hole at the bottom and all that kind of stuff. Because if you leave it till the end, it'll be very, very difficult. Because at the end, you'll only have, I think it's 12 stitches left. And it's a bit difficult to then turn it inside out to weave in the ends. Okay. So the next video, I will show you how to do the beaded pattern. So I'll do one for the beaded pattern and one for the colour work pattern.